Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric or hyperbolic trigonometric equation with complex numbers. How complex can that get, right? So we have sine hyperbolic or sin of z equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z. What is z? z is a complex number. What is a complex number? Well, a complex number can be written as a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel, by the way, don't forget, where a and b are real numbers and i is the square root of negative 1 because it is considered the principal square root of negative 1. There are two of them, right? There are two square roots, in other words. So, Let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. This problem has interesting results, which I'm hoping, I'm hoping you will enjoy. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Okay, with that said, let's get started. So, we have not the sine, but sine hyperbolic. So, I'm going to go ahead and give you a definition of sine hyperbolic. You can either memorize that, or there's an easier version of it which is kind of, I think, better. Anyways, we'll talk about both. And now we're going to see how we can solve it. If we had sine z equals 1, that would be fairly easy. You could draw a unit circle, or just remember that sine is 1 at one point, and that will be pi over 2, right? So do you think this answer is related to pi over 2 in any way? Let's find out. I, I'm not sure if I have... I think I did include the results from Wolfram Alpha. If I didn't forget... If I don't forget to share, which I sometimes do, I get too excited towards the end of the video, I'll share with you. Okay, so what is sine hyperbolic or what is hyperbolic sine of z? So hyperbolic sine of z can actually be defined using the regular sign. It's basically negative i times sine of iz. So you really do a lot of stuff to the sine of z. You take the z, multiply by i, kind of like give it a rotation, and then find the sine and give it another rotation. But those rotations are kind of like in different directions, right? i and negative i. Think about it. So, what do we get from here? If you remember Euler's formula, I hope you do, sine theta is given as e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta divided by 2i. There's an i at the bottom. And cosine is the plus version with no i at the bottom. Where does that come from? Well, cosine theta plus i sine theta is equal to e to the power i theta. Thanks to Euler, we have this beautiful, beautiful formula. And the most beautiful expression, identity, equation comes from here. You've probably seen a lot of videos and I'm planning to do one one day. But this one, and then replace theta with negative theta, you'll get another equation, so on and so forth. Anyways, this is sine theta. If you replace theta with i z, this gives you sine of i z, think about it, e to the power i times i z, which is i squared z, and negative i times i z is e to the power negative i squared z, divided by 2i, and i squared is negative 1, oops, did I say that? Well, it's kind of implied because if i is the square root of negative 1, you just square both sides, which will be valid, right? Great. So i squared is negative 1, that means we are going to get i e to the power negative z, minus e to the power z divided by 2i. That's just sine i z though, right? We need to multiply it by negative i. So our expression is going to be sine hyperbolic. Hyperbolic sine of z is negative i times sine of i z. And that is negative i times e to the power negative z minus e to the z divided by 2i. Now there is definitely a better way to do this, uh, which I'll tell you about but the i cancels out and we end up with a negative. So we're going to negate that, which will give us e to the z minus e to the negative z divided by 2. And this is hyperbolic sine of z. So if you want to memorize that as a formula, go ahead, be my guest, because that'll be super duper helpful, most cases. Okay, now we want this to equal 1. What does that mean? Set it equal to 1. So let's go ahead and take e to the z minus e to the negative z. Notice that this kind of looks like sine of z without the i, okay? No i in it. <laughs> so that is always going to be real or can it become? Well, in this case, it's a real value and we want to set it equal to 1. Awesome. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. First step, cross multiplication, right? We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 and then that gives us this. 
And now we want to write e to the power negative z as 1 over e to the z. So basically the same identity works uh, with real numbers as well as complex numbers. Doesn't matter, right? And then from here, we should do substitution. How does that work? Call this something. How about w? Because w is commonly used with complex numbers like z. But z is more common. So we're going to set e to the z equal to w. Not omega. This gives us the following. w minus 1 over w equals 2. Multiply everything by w. w squared minus 1 equals 2w. And then bring the 2w over. However you want to do this. I mean, some people do completing the square. Some people do the quadratic formula, which is essentially the same thing. So let's just use the formula. w equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 minus 4ac. Four, 4 plus 4 is 8. And then now we can write square root of 8 as 2 root 2. By the way, these are real numbers. Just be careful. And dividing everything by 2 gives us 1 plus minus root 2. Great. W is real. As real as it can be, right? Wait a minute. Isn't Z, is Z real too then? We'll find out. So here's the thing. E to the Z is W. So we found the W values. E to the Z is 1 plus root 2 e to the z is 1 minus root 2. So we have two w values, which are these, right? Because w is e to the z. So what are we going to do with those? Solve for z. Great. Easy, right? Easy. You got that? E and z. Awesome. So we can go ahead and actually natural log both sides or just think about it. ln e to the z is z. And isn't it always like that? Let's find out. There are some restrictions or maybe I should say, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I totally forgot it. Okay. It just escapes me. But Z from here can be written as ln 1 plus root 2. And maybe I'll talk about it in a little bit. So this is all good, right? But what about this one? What's wrong with that? There's something really wrong with that from a real number perspective. Because if you ln 1 minus root 2, uh-oh, 1 minus root 2 is less than 0. Why? Because root 2 is greater than 1. Obviously, root 1 and root 2. Which one is bigger, right? So what do you do with those? Hmm. We have to fix it. You can't ln a negative number. Yes, you can. But you have to use the ln of a complex number definition. So you kind of need to think about it this way. What is ln of a complex number like a plus bi? Right? Suppose this is a plus bi. It's not, but it's kind of like a plus bi. Well, first you ln the absolute value of a plus bi, and then you add plus i times the argument of a plus pi. By the way, if argument is the principal argument, which is usually the smallest angle between negative pi and pi, I think, or zero and pi, something like that. And then we're going to need to add multiples of 2 pi to this. So you can definitely add that, which was going to come up later. But let's just do without right now. So in other words, ln 1 minus root 2 is going to be ln absolute value of 1 minus root 2. By the way, uh, the absolute value of 1 minus root 2 is just root 2 minus 1. It's opposite because it's negative. The ln of a, you know, how do I say that? The absolute value of a negative real number is its opposite, which is positive. So it's going to be ln root 2 minus 1. What about the argument, though? Argument, okay, this is a negative real number. So on the argon plane, it is going to appear here with a distance from 0, which is the absolute value, plus you have pi radians as its argument, right? Because it's real. It's on the real axis, but on the negative side. So we can just write pi here, again, with the stipulation that you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, which is going to come up a little later, but let me just leave it at that for now. So two solutions. One of them is this one directly, you can ln and it is real. The other solution is not real. So which is interesting because there are two solutions. One is real, one is not. That's fairly interesting, I think, don't you think? And you can definitely plug it in. So where does the addition of 2 pi blah blah stuff come in? Let me show you. The results from Wolfram Alpha first, uh-oh. The Wolfram Alpha style, <laughs> can't figure it out exactly, right? What is hyperbolic sine inverse of one, right? Come on, give us a value. It's not too hard. You can do it Wolfram Alpha. You can definitely do better than this. But anyways, 
It's just a calculator. Anyways, right? I'm not even call it a language model, whatever. When I called it AI, a lot of people objected to it. Like they said, oh, it's just a large language model. I guess it's what it is. So include the 2 pi n. And let me just show you. Uh, when you have a complex number, uh, you can just add 2 pi i. Because if a number is like, let's say, z can always be multiplied by e to the power 2 pi i. This is equivalent to z. You know why? Because this is 1 in the complex world. That's the complexification of 1. When you natural log, you're going to know what I'm talking about. You're always allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to the argument. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.